Visiting with the head coach of the Chinese Thunderbirds, who have won 10 straight games, entering the championship game Saturday in Class 4 against Thunder Basin. And, Chad, obviously, I know you guys, and we've talked a couple different times this season about the progression and improvement uh, throughout the course of this season. And is there anything I can point – is there anything you can kind of pinpoint besides that that maybe has kind of led your team to the state championship game from your perspective? Well, you know, I just think it's, it's just been little steps uh, every week. And I, and I think one of the biggest steps for us in which gave the kids the confidence that they needed and, and made them believe that they could be as good as – play as good as they've been playing uh, was that win against Sheridan early in the season in week five, I believe, you know, and – and that was a game in which you go back and you watch the film in which we win by two and, and there were some things that we did that we, you know, inside the five twice and didn't score. And, but it was just a, a good game for us um, to kind of build confidence. And, and then, like I said, and then it's each week there was just little things after the Thunder Basin game, learning how to play full full 48 minutes and then you go to Natrona and you have to play that full 48. We pick it off to um, – seal the deal you know and and then playing against teams in which sometimes you don't play as well because the competition is um a little down or something that game and they still played at their level and then sometimes when you when you have teams and they they still make that close once in a while and then i thought our kids came out and uh executed in those games and took care of business right away and uh just each week building that confidence as you now get ready for the rematch, how much do you just try and keep the focus on yourself this week? I told the kids on Saturday during film, you know, we're going to do what we do. It's, we're here because of what we've done, and we're not going to change that. And Thunder Basin's here because of what they do, and they're not going to change. And so we're going to stick with our, our points of emphasis that we do every week and blocking and tackling and pursuit, holding on to the ball, catching the ball, you know, just the little things. And we'll continue to focus on those things starting night of practice and throughout the rest of the week. As you get ready to rematch against Thunder Basin, Chad, what did you take away from that game way back in week zero at the end of August? One, they're a good football team. You know, that, that uh, Pakula is a great running back for him. He does good things, and you gotta you got to team tackle that guy. Um, and we didn't do a great job of tackling in that game. And, and that, like I said, that made tackling a, a huge point of emphasis week in and week out um, since that game. Offensively, we just – we were pretty new up front, and we just didn't do a great job of blocking all the time. And I think our, our O line um, saw that, and then they've they've progressed each week. Our receivers um, have done a great job since that game, understanding the outside run game, the outside bubbles and screens and things like that. And so, just the little things. And then obviously the biggest thing was you got to be able to play for full uh, full 48 minutes. You know, we had that game, and we ended up losing uh, in the last two and a half minutes of the game. And so it taught our kids a lot. Well, and you also had a chance driving down the field. Unfortunately, I think uh, your quarterback, Graydon Buell, ended up kind of kind of tripping on the turf there a little bit uh, before he was able to throw the ball in that last play. So it, in a matchup that's so close, kind of neck and neck, what's got to happen right for your team and your perspective? You know, you got to play together. you got to do your job and your job only. Uh, you got to team tackle. Uh, you got to stay locked up till the whistle. Just every little thing that we've done this year, that's what we have to be able to continue to do. And we have to turn them over. You know, we have to make sure that uh, uh, we turn them over once or twice in that game. How nice is it to have the home field advantage for this, something that you guys worked all season long to get? Oh, it's awesome. You know, to be able to, to play them back at home this year, is a, it's, a, it's a blessing. It's awesome to be at your home place. You're on your own schedule. Um, and so it, it's, it's super exciting, and, and the kids earned it. And so... Uh, we're, we're, we're very excited for that. Chad, thanks so much for your time. Best of luck Saturday against Thunder Basin. All right, thank you. Visiting with the head coach of the Thunder Basin Bolts, who are back in the 4A championship game for a second straight year. That's Trent Pakula. And Trent, thanks so much for taking some time to visit with me about the 4A title game. Uh, this is a, a game where I know that you had kind of some sights set on earlier in the year. Uh, you were open, almost maybe hoping to host this game, and some things uh, didn't work out along the way. But first of all, how happy are you to be back in this championship game after you were here with a veteran crew a year ago? Well, anytime you can get to this point of the season, you're still playing football, I think you're excited. We thought early on we had something pretty special, you know, and, and we had a couple of bumps along the way, but I think we took those as learning opportunities, and, and I think we became a better football team because of the two losses that we have. And when we played East week one, I think we all kind of thought that there's a good chance that we might see those guys again. And, and you know, here we are. 12 weeks later in that same position. So we're extremely excited. I'm, 
I'm proud of, I'm proud of the, the, the things our kids have been able to accomplish, but, you know, we have something a little bit bigger in mind for, for this year. Well, talk about what did you take away from that game way back in week zero at the end of August that, you know, maybe you can kind of think that you might see. Obviously, both of you guys have changed, but what did you take away from that game? Well, I think, you know, it, anytime you can go out and, and I think, you know, they were – East was kind of billed as the early favorite, I think, and, and we came out and, and played – they didn't play great football, um, but we were able to get a win. And, and I, so I think that gave us some confidence that – um, even though we had graduated all those kids and, and the pieces that we had last year that, that we were able to, you know, kind of restock it um, and, and really come out and, and put together a, a good football team. Um, I think both teams have gotten better. Um, you know, they continue to put up points and, and, and Graydon Beal continues to throw touchdown passes. And, and I think that's what their, their team is, is they're just going to try to outscore you. You know, and their defense is, is solid, but I think they just want to get the ball in their offensive hands and as many times as they can in a game and try to try to get the ball in the end zone. And for us, we're a balanced team that that our our run game has been pretty solid all year long, but I think our passing game has really improved. And even more than that, I think our defense, which started off the year, uh, we, we were struggling early. We were winning games, but we struggled to to where we're at now, which I think we're, we're pretty salty. And I think we got the right – the right kids in the right places um, for what we're trying to accomplish. I was going to ask you, in terms of that improvement, and you talked about how both teams are improved, but what are some areas that you really have kind of uh, shined a light on with your team that uh, I don't know if they've surprised you or that might not be the right phrase, but you know, uh, an area or, or a couple of areas where you really have come along to this point? Well, our secondary, you know, we started the first game of the year again. We were kind of nervous having to go against East first game of the year because we knew they were going to throw the ball all over the place. And we had one returning starter in Dylan Catlin um, at corner, and we were replaced everybody else. The, the three guys we played were pretty – that we had to replace were pretty good, pretty good guys. And so, uh, you know, we've had to move some guys in and out. Ryan Jordan, the junior, who has stepped in. Sergio Paleo has, has stepped in. Jackson Pakula, um, Ty Myers, Andre Felton. All these guys have stepped in and taken over some roles. And kind of, you know, we may not have like that, you know, true lockdown corner or a safety that's going to come up and, and hit, um, you know, like, like we've had in the past. But I think as a collective group, I think they've made so much improvement that I think we, we kind of feel really confident with those guys. And then I would also say our, our defensive front, our, just our front four, um, have just as years has gone on, has, has really improved on getting to the quarterback and getting the quarterbacks into uncomfortable situations. So now you got to travel to Cheyenne for this championship game. What are your thoughts on seeing the Thunderbirds again? I know you talked about how they've improved and how you know that they want to get the ball back into their hands. What are you looking at this second time around, seeing as how it was so long that you guys played, uh, you know, you're talking over two months ago? Well, I think the biggest thing I think you look at with them offensively is that they're running a lot more quarterback run. Uh, when we saw them, uh, they ran – uh, Beal ran some, and in fact, he scored a couple of touchdowns against us, but it was off the scrambles, where it seems like now they're running, they've, they've established a lot more quarterback run. They like to run quarterback counter um, and get to keep the ball in his hand. Uh, like, you know, obviously, I, he's their best football player, and I think they know that. And so they're just trying to keep the ball in his hands as much as possible. And then when we played him in week one, I think Jackson Hesford had 13 catches. And, and so I think what they do now is they do a lot better job of just distributing the ball to the other guys. And so those other guys are making plays and, and kind of taking the pressure off the Jacks or uh, out of the Hesford kids. So as an offense, I think they're a lot more, I guess, multidimensional in how they approach because they're getting the ball into other guys' hands. And then their defense is just, you know, you look at their pass defense. It's been solid all year long. They're one or two in the state. I'm not exactly sure statistically. But so they're, they do a great job of, of covering up the holes in the secondary and, and putting pressure on the quarterback. All right, without revealing any sort of secrets, what's got to happen right for you guys to, to possibly win your school's first football championship on Saturday, Trent? First and foremost, I think offensively, we have to control the line of scrimmage. Okay. Really, both sides of the ball, we have to control the line of scrimmage. But by us controlling the line of scrimmage on the offensive side, we can also control the clock. And if we can control the clock, we can keep their offense off the field, which I think might be our best defense is, is keeping their offense off the field. So, you know, we've got to have – our run game with Jackson, Pakula, and Hayden Lumberg and Hunter Lumberg, those three guys have got to 
you know, establish themselves. Our offensive line, uh, who the first time we played these guys in the second half especially, really took over. Um, and for the last couple of weeks have done the same. They've got to establish the line of scrimmage for us to be successful. Defensively, you know, I think our key is to get pressure on Bill. The last three times we've played them, we've been able to really put a lot of pressure on him. Mm-hmm. And not that he doesn't throw well out of the pocket, but I think if you just allow him to sit back and, and, and not get pressure, he's going to pick you apart. So we've got to get pressure um, and try to do that with four downs and so we can keep seven guys in, in the pass and into the uh, – um, routes and so if we can do those things, I think we have a chance. Um, and then you know, every, in the high school football, if you win the turnover battle, there's a good chance you're going to win the football game. So um, it's just it's an exciting thing, you know. And just going into their place, it's a familiar place for us because we played there so many times. So I think <laughs> I think we like our chances, um, but I think it's going to be a great game. Trent, thank you so much for your time. Best of luck Saturday afternoon against the Thunderbirds in the 4A title game. Thanks, David. I appreciate it.